Hallelujah! Hello, River Church family and friends. So happy that all of you are tuning in with us today. Now, how have you been, my friends? That's right. How have you been? Have you been living happy and living blessed? Well, since the start of the year, our messages have been centered on the theme, Live Happy. And so many of you, you have been blessed and strengthened through the word, through the messages, and your eyes have been opened to the truth that God wants you to live happy. That's right. God wants you to live happy and His word empowers you to do just that. So my dear friends, continue to revisit the message through our YouTube, listen in to the message videos again and soak in the Word of God and share these message videos to the people around you so that they too can live happy. And let's be real, when the people around us also live happy, our life will also be made easier and happier, isn't it? Now my dear friends and church, what does it mean to you to live happy and live blessed? Well, I think it probably includes having happy happy things um, happening in your life and also to have people around you who make you happy. That should be living happy and living blessed. But then, there would surely be setbacks, challenges and struggles that take place in our life that will bring frustration, stress and sorrow. So does it mean that we cannot live happy during those seasons? Certainly not. Jesus clearly tells us in his word in John 16 verse 33. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. That's right, in the midst of your trials and sorrows, even when in the deep of your dark valley, you are to cheer up, you are to live happy. How is that possible? Now catch this. This indeed is the good news of happiness which will make everyone happy. Jesus has come and Jesus has overcome and conquered all odds in the world. Therefore, we can hold on to this spiritual truth to live happy in our family, when at work, and in our ministry. We hold on this truth to live happy in every dimension of our life, emotionally, physically, mentally, socially, and financially. Hallelujah! Yes, my dear church and friends, live happy, live blessed. Live in the fullness of life and joy the way God intends for you. Live happy, live blessed, live under God's protection, provision, and prosperity. Hallelujah! And do you know that to live happy and blessed has a lot to do with your eyes? Yeah, your eyes. Well, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 verse 9, he who has a generous eye will be blessed. That's right. He who has a generous eye will be blessed. Some of you, you have an eye for talent, an eye for fashion. Some of you have an eye for good food. Today, by the truth of God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to develop an eye for generosity. You are going to have the generous eye where you go around saying, God, who can I bless today? God, I keep, I'm giving this to you so that you could use it to make a difference. Hallelujah. He who has a generous eye will be blessed. Now let us all declare this together. I've got the generous eye. That's right. You who have the generous eye will be blessed. Hallelujah. You know, my dear friends, all of us want to live happy. We want to live blessed. We want to live under God's blessings of provision, protection, and prosperity. And we see here in Proverbs 22 verse 9 so clearly that there is a direct connection between our generosity and God's blessings. Therefore, let us live happy. Live happy with a generous eye. That's right. Live happy with the generous eye. There is this verse in Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, in Luke 6 verse 38, where Jesus says, Give and it will be given to you. Wow, did you catch that? Give and you will be blessed. Give and you will be happy. And how much? 
how is that blessing going to fall on you fall on you give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be poured into your lap that's right hallelujah give and it will be given to you give and you will receive back god's blessings well it does not necessarily mean that when you give money money will be given back to you it does mean that when you give you will surely receive back god's blessings in a monetary form or in the form of good health good relationship and flourishing career hallelujah you will receive back God's blessings as you give and continue to be more generous. Hallelujah. Live happy with the generous eye. Now, this is the bottom line. Our spiritual enemy, Satan, he cannot stop the blessings of God. He has no power to because it is the unshakable spiritual truth and principle in God's kingdom that if you sow, you will reap and when you give you will receive satan has no power to stop god's blessings but he can and will do justice he will distort your relationship with god's blessings he will distort how you view and how you regard god's blessings in your life so today i want to show you a very destructive mindset towards god's blessings so that you can recognize it in your own life and today you will decide i'm going to live happy with the generous eye this very destructive mindset towards god's blessings is selfishness this is so very destructive because it robs you of the happy and blessed life God has in store for you. Yes, he who has a generous eye will be blessed. Proverbs 22 verse 9. At the same time, the Bible tells us in James 3 verse 6, where there is jealousy and selfishness, there will be confusion and every kind of evil. Now you see, that is not a pretty nor happy life, is it? Where there is selfishness, there is chaos, confusion, and every kind of evil, which means you will not be under God's protection, God's provision, and God's prosperity. So where there is selfishness, you cannot and you will not live happy. Well, there is a widely known parable in the Bible where we see both the generous eye and the selfish eye in action. The parable of the Good Samaritan recorded in Luke chapter 10. In the parable, we read about how a man was badly attacked by robbers. Not only was he robbed, he was badly beaten, stripped naked, and left lying on the road half dead. Let's pick up this parable in verse 31 of Luke 10. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. So here the scripture tells us that the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan all saw the same thing. The man lying on the road half dead. Or did they really see the same thing? Did they see the same thing in the same way? Well, the priest and the Levite saw the half-dead man and then they passed by on the other side. They saw the half-dead man but they did not do anything nor give any form of help. Here the scripture does not tell us their reasons but I am suspecting that the priest and the Levite saw the half-dead man with their selfish eyes. Now, church and friends, this is what selfishness will do to you and me. When we are selfish, we will have got no time to be helping others, to be looking out for other people's interests. When we are selfish, we are just so consumed about how our own life, our own convenience, our resources will be affected. And we will have got no time to help others, no time to serve God, not enough resources to build God's kingdom.
because we are just so concerned and interested in our own needs, what we want, what we need, and also what we feel will most benefit ourselves. Well, while some of you may think that such a self-preservation mode of living will help you to increase and enlarge in security and even happiness, the truth is selfishness will only take you away from the path of God's blessings and happiness for you. That's right, selfishness will steal away the happiness and blessings God has in store for you. Therefore, my dear friends, let us choose to live happy with the generous eye. Because where there is selfishness, there will be chaos, there will be confusion and every kind of evil. Where there is selfishness, you cannot live happy. Now, let's recognize this. There is a direct connection between your generosity and God's blessings. Therefore, Choose to live happy. Live happy with the generous eye. I think the Samaritan in the parable has the generous eye. Let's look at what the generous guy, or rather what the Samaritan did. Because he saw the same thing as the priest and the Levite, but he did not act the same way. Look with me at verses 33 to 35 of Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. But a Samaritan as he traveled came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. 34. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Hallelujah. When you have the generous eye, you will not just see a need and stop there. When you have a generous eye, you see a need and you meet the need. When you have the generous eye, you will always be helping a hurting person, building up a broken person. When you have the generous eye, you will always be looking out for the safety, the welfare, and the interest of others. When you have the generous eye, you will always be freely giving so that someone can be better off, happier, someone can be healed, can be blessed by God. And the beauty of it all is, he who has the generous eye will be blessed. As you go generously blessing and helping others, you too will be blessed. Hallelujah. Let us live happy. Live happy with the generous eye. Hallelujah. I believe that this is the moment where a lot of you are like me. You are convicted by the truth of God's word to repent of your selfish way of thinking and your selfish and your self-centered way of living. And for some of you, you finally get the picture why there have always been insecurity, chaos, disorder, and lack in your life. Because you have been neglecting serving God, you have been neglecting giving to others and giving to God's kingdom. And because of that, you have been missing out on the blessings, on the happiness God wants to pour into your life. So my dear friends and church, Right now is a good time to commit to God that I'm going to live happy with the generous eye. Hallelujah. So no matter where you are, why not we make this commitment and declaration together. Hallelujah. Let's do this together. I've got the generous eye. I'm breaking free from all forms of selfishness and self-centeredness. God, what you have given me is not just for me and my own consumption. I commit to live happy with the generous eye. For he who has a generous eye will be blessed. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, for you to continually live happy with the generous eye, you must always remember why God has blessed you. 
That's right. God has blessed you, but not because you earned it, not because you deserve it. God has blessed you for a purpose. Let me show you a couple of scripture verses to help you see this purpose. The Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthians, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, he said, and I believe this is also what God is saying to you and me today, you will be made rich in every way. The word does not say you will be made rich just financially. If you think that to live happy and to live blessed is just to be financially rich, then you are seriously undercutting the goodness of God. You will be made rich in every way. You will receive every kind of blessing, blessing in every way. Yes, it includes financially, but it also includes you having intimate, long-term relationships Relationships. It includes you being blessed with fruits in your evangelism, your good health, your good career. You will be made rich in every way. Not so that you can spend it all on yourself. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Hallelujah. Why did God make you rich? Why will God continue to make you rich? So that His blessings in your life can flow through you. So that on every occasion, not on some occasions, not only when it's convenient for you, but on every occasion, you can be generous. And through your generosity, the people around you are going to see the goodness of God and give thanks to God. Hallelujah. God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. And this is in essence, in the Old Testament, what God said to Abram before he became Abraham. In Genesis 12, God says this, God said this to Abram, and I believe he's saying this to all of his children today. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Hallelujah. My dear church, brothers and sisters, imagine this. Every person in your immediate and extended family, every person in your workplace, everyone in your neighborhood, community, and your nation, all people on earth will be blessed through you because of your generosity. Hallelujah. You are blessed to be a blessing. And to sum it all up in one sentence, God is bringing us today to acknowledge this and to live this way. And that is because God has blessed us with more, we will intentionally give more. Yes, because God has blessed me with more, I will be a bigger blessing to the world. Hallelujah. Now, church and friends, why don't we declare this together? Because God has blessed us with more, we will intentionally give more. Hallelujah. The reason I highlighted intentional is that most of us, we are not intentional givers. Think about it. We are intentional consumers. Well, let's say when we have got a pay raise, I think many of us will be thinking, now what can I buy? What can I get to add to my bag collection, my wardrobe or my watch collection? Isn't it? And when you really want to get something, get hold of something, you will figure out how to get it and to get it at the best deal. We are all intentional consumers. But I believe with all my heart today, God is saying to you and me, My child, I have blessed you not so that it can be all for your use. I have blessed you so that you can be a bigger blessing around the world. Hallelujah! God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing and it is time that you be intentional in your giving. Let's live happy with the generous eye. You know, spontaneously helping and serving and giving is important, but we must not stop there. 
Look at the Samaritan in the parable again. He might have spontaneously helped the injured and half dead man while he didn't plan on bumping into that man. But he did not stop there. After dressing his wounds, he took the injured man to an inn to further rest and recover. And still he did not stop there. He left some money and told the innkeeper to take care of the injured man. And still he planned further. Hey, this amount of money may not be enough, so let me come back sometime later so that I can reimburse the innkeeper for any extra um, expenses incurred. Well, this Samaritan seriously is intentional and strategic in his giving, isn't it? Hallelujah! Let us live happy with the generous eye. But the generous man always planned to do what is generous. In Isaiah 32 verse 8, but the generous, but generous people plan to do what is generous and they stand firm in their generosity. Hallelujah. That's right church and friends. We all want to live happy. We all want to live under God's blessings of provision, protection, and prosperity. The blessings that will sustain and last. God's blessings that will not be shaken or taken away because of circumstances. We all want such firm and unshakable blessings from our God. It is time then that you stand firm in your generosity. You plan to do what is generous. You be intentional and strategic givers. Yes, set aside intentionally finance, your finances to give generously to God. Hallelujah. And as you do so, you will continually be happy and blessed. For the word says, he who has a generous eye will be blessed. Hallelujah. This is truly living happy, isn't it? Hallelujah. So plan to do what is generous. Be intentional, strategic givers. That's right. This is what God has called us to be. This is who we are becoming. We are going to be intentional and strategic givers. Hallelujah. You know, in my own life, I have seen how when I was not intentional in my giving to God and His kingdom, I tended to be easily swayed and distracted by circumstances. So much so that sometimes giving to God and His house became secondary and God neglected. And this certainly is not the way God wants me to live happy by. And I will always remember how many years ago, our pastors, Pastor Stephen and Pastor Monica, they were sharing how in their much earlier years as Christians, every month they would set aside a sum of money to bless someone in need. So throughout the month, their generous eyes would be wide open and when they saw someone in need of an electrical appliance at home but had difficulty affording it, they would get the electrical appliance and bless the person. When they saw a young student needing a laptop that he could not afford for his studies, they would get the laptop and bless that young student. Hallelujah! And many years have passed, I still remember Remember this rich lesson from my pastors. Many years have passed. My pastors, Pastor Stephen and Pastor Monica, they have stood firm in their generosity. They are still always a blessing to the people around them. Hallelujah. And I want to pray and declare over my pastors that because Pastor Stephen and Pastor Monica have the generous eye, they shall be blessed with a bountiful harvest and they shall taste and see the riches and the goodness of our God in the land of the living in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear church and friends, now is the time for you to stand firm in your generosity. Plan to be generous. Be intentional and strategic in your generous giving. You see, 
we cannot conquer selfishness, greed, or the fear of having not enough just by prayer and fasting, but also by obedience. Hallelujah. I really believe this is one of the reasons God established tithing. Well, this is the first thing that conquers selfishness and greed and moves us to faith and generosity. So give back to God the first tenth and let the selfish monster inside of you that has been stealing and destroying your happiness and blessings be conquered and crushed in Jesus' name. But do not stop there. Beyond your tithe that you give back to God, continue to give generously to God and His works every month or every week. Yes, beyond the tithe you give back to God, set aside another percentage, another sum where you give generously to get more people saved through the gospel. Buy Bibles for those people who do not have one. Give generously to support the, develop, the developmental program that our church is launching soon to equip Christians to make and multiply disciples. Give generously to support and partner God's work at River Church to bring the good news of happiness and salvation around the world. Give generously and intentionally to God and His works. I really believe this is the best and most rewarding use of your money and finances. And this is a biblical giving. God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. Hallelujah! My dear church family and friends, live happy. Yes, go ahead and live happy. Live under God's fullness of life and joy. Live under God's blessings of prosperity, provision, and protection. Live happy by being a blessing. Live happy. Live happy with the generous eye. For he who has a generous eye will be blessed. Thus says the Lord. He will not change. He has said the word and he certainly will bless you when you give and when you are generous. That's right. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. Hallelujah. Live happy with the generous eye, my dear church. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every selfish monster that has been conquered and crushed. And I thank you for everyone who has stepped up from the, from the trap of selfishness into generosity. I thank you, oh God, that every person right here today under the power and the truth of your word has been set free from selfishness and self-centeredness and any form of fear of lack and they have stepped into generosity. And I thank you, O oh God, as they commit to live happy by giving you, by giving to you and your works generously, as they commit to live happy by being a blessing to the people around them, you will continue to add and increase into their life such that they can continue to be an even bigger blessing around their world. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for the increase that you are bringing into our lives and we, and we thank you that that through our generosity, many lives are going to be touched. Many lives are going to be saved. Marriages will be restored. Families reconciled. And bodies will be healed. And this church shall continue to have overflowing resources to bring your good news to the ends of the earth. Father, we thank you and we love you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live happy with the generous eye, my dear church. God bless all of you and love you too.